So my question is, why do people, also me often in this case, prefer good tasting food over healthy food? It's because you haven't been trained from childhood to realize that the food that is healthy for you is also the food that is good for you. It's because you've been fed things which are not good for you. And the system then gets used to that. And when it's denied that, it doesn't feel very happy about it. So those kids who are trained, for example, not to eat sugar, who are just not given sugar from childhood very, very strictly, they're not able to eat sugar. For them, it's something which causes them, they feel dizzy or they feel sick or they feel uncomfortable and they, they can't handle sugar. Their system rejects it. Can you imagine? Wouldn't that be nice if your system rejected sugar? <laughs> so it's because you've been trained that way. You've been trained to actually like the things which are not good for you, which is what we call the socialization process. It's ego at play, no? It's the ego being fed. The ego actually supports you in any action which is going to bring you suffering. One of them is, for example, eating sweets. If you eat sweets from childhood on, it's not going to be easy for you to stop eating them. There are people who don't give their children meat. They just never eat meat. They never, ever, ever eat meat. And then when they're in their 20s or something, if they're given a piece of meat to eat, it's not possible for them to eat it. They can't relate to it, actually. Because they haven't been socialized into being meat eaters. I'm not saying that meat is unhealthy. It's not a matter of health with meat. Meat is just killing. You know, you're taking a life to eat meat, which is why it's not something which is advisable. Because if you take the life of another being, then you've made an enemy of all the beings around that being. So it's not advisable. But if you just don't give a child those things to eat, they don't eat them. So it's because your parents had given you a lot of sugar as a child. Now you like sweets. Yeah. And one day, those people who grow up with a lot of sugar, the next thing is they move to alcohol, which is the next step after sugar. And then after that, life gets taken over by alcohol in many cases. The more sugar a child eats, the greater the danger of that child being attracted to alcohol. So that's the reason. There are also many, many other reasons, but I think this is a good reason to start with. So now, every time you eat something sweet, you have to remind yourself that that's not good for you, and it's really not good for you. But that your system has been wrongly programmed to believe that it's good for you. So you have to deprogram yourself. And how do you do that? By tuning in, in that moment when you get something sweet in your hand. And I understand sometimes one eats sweet things, everyone does. But it's always good to know how to defend yourself in that moment. In that very, very moment, you bring yourself to this moment, to the present moment. Try it right now. Just bring yourself to this moment. Right now, here, here. It would be more difficult to eat something sweet when you're really present. Or if you tune in to the source, just take a moment to tune in to the center of your being, you know. And then you can't eat that. Which is why nobody likes to do that. It's always like, I'll eat it first and then I'll tune in. But it's, it's worth it whenever you feel you're eating something which is really unhealthy. It's a good practice to bring yourself to this moment in that second. Like just to actually stop for a second, bring yourself to this moment. The thing is that most spiritual seekers who are serious about it and they really want to find themselves, they become more and more healthy in the way they live and eat and 
just live life in general because they realize that it's a good way to live, you know. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice for your health, yes. What's interesting is that the longer you stay without sugar, the more sweet everything else tastes. For six intense days, immerse yourself in an amazing process. Tune in to the all-knowing source within you. Master yourself, empower others. Join the Presence Immersive with Maharishi Kapriti in the ancient town of Tiruvannamalai, South India. For more information and to register, click the link in the description below.